here we go let's go ahead and take a look on the grid below draw the graph of g of x well we have g of x being equals to minus cos of 2x right so on this grid provided we are supposed to draw the graph of g of x is equals to minus cos of 2x so seems pretty much straightforward we substitute uh, the values of x into g of x we have our points and we join them so let's go ahead and do that uh, we are going from minus 180 degrees let me just change the color here minus 180 degrees up until 180 degrees so we are going to be substituting uh, these values of x into g of x so let me just uh, substitute the first three and then we're going to jump to 6.2 after i've connected all the points so the first point is minus 180 well most people know what to do in such cases but not everyone let me show you how so g of minus 180 is equal to minus cos of 2 in place of x we have 180 so how do we substitute this in the calculator we substitute it in the following way we say that minus cos of and then your calculator is going to give you something like this and then you substitute well we have minus here and then we substitute 2 multiplied by minus 180 degrees that is how we substitute it in the calculator right so minus cos of 2 multiplied by minus 180 this gives me minus 1 so my first data point is right here when x is equals to minus 180 degrees y is minus 1 and then now i just replace minus 180 and substitute minus 135 i get zero and then when i substitute minus 90 i'm getting one so you do the same thing until you reach 180 degrees and your graph is going to look something like this so there we go that is 6.1 we have drawn the graph of g of x is equals to minus cos of 2x now let's go ahead and take a look at 6.2 so in 6.2 we write down the period of 2 g of x plus 10 well we know that g of x is equal to minus cos of 2x let's just start by determining 2 g of x 2 g of x is going to be equal to 2 multiplied by g of x which is minus cos of 2x and then if you multiply out by 2 we get minus 2 cos of 2x so there we go that is g 2g of x and then from there on what do we do we replace x with x plus 10 so we have 2g of x plus 10 so we're gonna have minus 2 cos of 2 in place of x x plus 10 so we need to determine the period of this function that is the period we need to determine so the period is going to be equals to 360 divided by this number right here so in this case it will be 360 divided by 2 which is 180 degrees so the function well not the function but the period of this graph uh, would be 180 degrees when it comes to cos and sine we always divide 360 by the value of this number right there if it was just cos of x plus 10 it would be 360 divided by 1 which is 360 if it was a half it would be 360 divided by a half right and then whatever answer you get that would be your period so that is how we determine the period of cos and sine right 6.2 let's take a look at 6.2 so in 6.3 use the graph to determine the values of x in the interval 0 to 180 for which f of x multiplied by g of x is less or equals to 0 right so one mistake most people will do in these kind of questions they will forget the interval we are interested in well 
it's a mistake I've done before. So make sure that you don't forget the interval that is included in the equation and just look for all possible values of x. We have to only look at that interval. So let's talk about this condition f of x multiplied by g of x being less or equals to zero. When does that happen? It happens when one of the function is positive and the other one is negative. When we multiply the two, the result will be less than zero, right? It will be less or equals to zero, right? And then if they are both positive, the result will be greater or equals to zero. And we know that we don't want that. And then when they're both negative, the result will be greater or equals to zero. We know that we don't want these. We want one to be positive and the other to be negative. The order does not matter. And then that is what satisfies our condition. So let's go ahead and look at our graphs. We have F, which is in black, and G, which is in red. So let's look for an interval where one is positive and one is negative from 0 to 180. From, so if you take a look here, from 0 to 45 degrees, F is positive, right? As we can see here, but G is negative but g is negative so that satisfies our condition x is an element of we have to include zero right zero to 45 is part of our solution and then from 45 up until 90 they are both positive so that does not satisfy our condition and then when we look at 90 to 135 g of x is positive f of x is negative so our condition is satisfied so another part that you are interested in is when x runs from 90 to 135 and then from 135 to so from 135 to 180 degrees they are both negative so when you multiply the two your answer will be positive and we are not really interested in that so the answer to 6.3 is this two here okay 6.3 let's take a look at 6.4 so 6.4 we're looking for the maximum value so let's just say mv we're looking for the maximum value of f of x minus g of x so when is this maximum it is maximum when f of x it is at its highest point and g of x is at its lowest point so f of x is at its highest point when it is equals to 2 right and then g of x is at its lowest point when it is equals to minus 1. So 2 minus minus 1, this gives us 3. So that is the maximum value of f of x minus g of x. You can clearly see that, um, where's my ruler? Right here, right here, it's where the distance between the two functions is at a maximum. That's where the distance between the two functions is at a maximum. Anywhere else, it's smaller than that, at least in our range, so in our domain. So that is um, 6.4. Let's take a look at 6.5. I remember 6.5, I think, from May, June 2023, if not 2024. There was a similar question, but we had E instead of 2. Uh, but the idea is the same. Determine the range of y is equals to 2, 2 cos of x plus 2. Right, I did take some time with this question uh, when I first came across it. Uh, I was not quite sure what we, we needed to do. Like, which theorem are we applying? Which rule are we testing here? Uh, but then, if you put some thought into it, you should realize that the range of y is equal to 2 to the power 2 cos of x plus 2 is being governed by cos of x is being governed by cos of x so you need to think about cos of x you need to think about cos of x what is the range of cos of x well cos of x it ranges from minus 1 to positive 1 that is the range of cos of x so its, mag its minimum value is at minus 1 and its maximum value is at 1 that is the range so Let's evaluate that and see. We have y being equals to 2 to the power 2. Its minimum value is at minus 1. So 2 minus 1 plus 2. So y is equals to 2. Well, minus 2 plus 2, that is 0. Any number to the power 0 
it's 1. Well, let me not say any number. 0 to the power 0 is not 1. So it's not any number. Right. But anyway, stories. And then let's evaluate it at y is equals to 2. And then its maximum value being 1. And then we add 2. So y is equals to 2 to the power 4. y is equals to 16. So x equals to 1 will be the smallest value of y is, well, not x, but y is equals to 1 is the smallest possible value of y. And y is equals to 16 is the, well, largest, the maximum value of y. So the range of y, this thing, is an element of 1, 2, 16.